Today, I'm going to show you two completely different ways to measure distance with Arduino. One using ultrasound waves and another using infrared light. At the end, I'll reveal a crazy smart home application using the sensors that I haven't tried yet. I'd really love to hear your thoughts on it. First, let's start with the HCSR04 ultrasound sensor. The sensor needs a 5 volt power supply and has two additional pins. It expects a 10 microseconds pulse on the trigger pin. After receiving this pulse, the module generates 8 bursts at 40 kHz. Humans can only hear up to about 20 kHz, but dogs and other animals can actually hear the sensor working, so your dog might give you weird looks during this project. So how do we measure distance? The sensor emits this ultrasonic signal and the nearest object reflects it back. The sensor then outputs the echo pulse on the second pin called the echo pin. Sound waves travel through air at approximately 343 meters per second. So based on the delay between trigger and echo, we can calculate the distance using the time of flight measurement. Pretty cool. Let's try it out. Ground to ground and VCC to VCC. Could also use these pins, but I really like this one. And then I have two more pins, the trigger and the echo. I will put the trigger to pin 10 and the echo to pin 11. Now, we could manually produce this signal on the trigger pin and then count microseconds and then calculate the distance or someone else has already done it for us and that's what's called libraries. So let's check if there is an hc-sr04 library. Great! Someone already did this. So let's install it and then go to examples. Let's start with a simple example. So the trigger pin is on pin 10 and the echo pin is on pin 11. And we start the serial connection with 9600 baud. We have a trigger pin, we have an echo pin, and then we measure the distance. So inside of our loop, we just measure the distance and then we output one. That's interesting, why? Just remove this centimeters. Let's just output the distance and centimeters. And this is what it looks like. It measures around 155 centimeters from this table to the ceiling. The ceiling is a little bit uneven. So let's measure this wall here. Yeah, that looks like a reliable measurement. And if I put the hand in between see how it changes but sometimes i get weird measurements in between as i already mentioned this is ultrasound but you can actually hear something that's pretty funny so if i put it next to the microphone pretty cool now this is pretty slow and we can increase the speed if we want to we just remove this delay and then it goes as fast as possible. Now this is pretty fast. The second sensor I'd like to show you is called the Sharp 2Y0A21. This sensor needs a 5 volt power supply and has one analog output. It continuously outputs a voltage that represents the measured distance. This sensor also transmits and receives a signal, but this time it's an infrared light signal. One way of measuring distance using light is the same method the ultrasonic sensor uses, time of flight. Light also takes time to travel from A to B, but compared to sound, it travels almost one million times faster. So it's incredibly tricky to measure. My Leica Disto, for example, works on this principle. But to put this into perspective, the Arduino Uno's 16 MHz crystal oscillates once every 62.5 nanoseconds. During this time, 
Light travels 18.7 meters. So using Arduino for light based time of flight measurements is impossible. Sound is way slower. In one clock cycle, it only travels about the width of a human hair. Crazy. Okay, so we're not using time of flight. How can we detect distance? This sensor uses a position sensitive photodiode that detects exactly where the light beam hits the sensor. And this position changes depending on the distance. Let me show you. This sensor is effectively measuring the angle. So if we put an object here and the sensor sends out the signal. <laughs> so if we put an object here, then this light gets reflected back into the sensor at around this angle. If we place the object here, then you can see that this is a different angle. And these differences can be detected with this position sensitive detector. Awesome tech. Let's try it out. All right, so this sensor here requires five volts ground and it outputs an analog voltage. So let's connect the analog voltage to a zero ground to ground and five volts to five volts. So now we get an analog voltage here. We could output this voltage. Let's start a serial connection and then output analog read A0. So now you see we get this number here from 0 to 1023, representing the distance. If we take a look at the data sheet, this is far from linear. So Let's see if there is maybe a library. If we search for 2y0a21, there are multiple libraries. I will just try the first one. Basic usage is great. So define pin a0 and we start a serial connection, create this new sensor object. And then we just measure the distance and print the distance can remove the delay to go as fast as possible. And now we actually get the distance. If we compare the data sheets of these two sensors, the ultrasonic sensor has a range of two centimeters to four meters. The infrared sensor has a range of 10 centimeters to 80 centimeters. But before I end this video, what's this crazy smart home idea I had? My idea was to mount distance sensors in every door frame of the house. Two of them to be precise, because my plan was to count how many people are in each room. In the end, I didn't do it, because there are several problems. First, the installation effort is insane. You need a ton of wires, and you have to drill holes in your expensive door frames and then you're stuck with these ugly holes forever. Furthermore, what height would you actually mount them at? If they're too close to the ground, they'll count legs, but not really reliably. And if it's higher, they'll count your body and sometimes your arms. And if they're too high, it won't detect children. What happens when two people walk through side by side? Unlikely, but it will happen eventually. What about pets with various sizes and different numbers of legs? At first, I thought it was brilliant, but the more I think about it, the more I realize it's actually a terrible idea. But what do you think? There are actually much better ways to detect people in rooms. If you're interested in a solution that actually works, check out my video about millimeter wave sensors they solve most of these problems. If this video was helpful, please like and subscribe to this channel. Thank you for watching. See you in the next video.